I'm Wendy Carlin and I teach in the Department of Economics at University College London. In March this year, the Journal of Economic Literature published a forum on the teaching of introductory economics. And in that forum, Greg Nankew presented his case for the status quo, and Sam Bowles and I argued that now's the time to change the way we teach economics. So let's think back to the last time there was a really dramatic change in the way the first course was taught. The cause was the Great Depression and the emergence of high and persistent unemployment. The combination of the problems of the 1930s and a new economic theory, Keynes's model, including the concept of aggregate, aggregate demand, created the basis for a new way of teaching economics. And this was Paul Samuelson's textbook, Economics, published in 1948. So the question we have to ask ourselves now is what are the basic economic problems that are confronting us and how we, should we be bringing them to our introductory economic students? We went out into classrooms around the world and asked the students what they thought the most pressing problems economists today should be addressing. And you can see by the word cloud that they came up with inequality, unemployment, poverty, and a series of terms related to the climate crisis. And now we're facing another crisis, that of COVID-19. So what's the new economic theory that we could bring together with those new problems and find a new way to teach our students? And here on the left, we see the new problems, including environmental sustainability, inequality and financial instability. And over on the right, some of the new economic theory. Here we can contrast a standard principles text with cause the economy. So a standard principles text always begins with what's economics and how to think like an economist and then goes on to supply and demand. We do something quite different. We start with a really big question about the economy. How did the economy come to look like it does today? And we then uh, from there go on to build up uh, the decision-making process of actors in the economy, beginning with an individual actor taking a decision against a fixed environment. So we start with a student deciding how to divide up their time between studying and free time. Having set up the framework for constrained optimization using feasible sets and indifference curves, we then move on to the interaction between agents, social interactions and strategic behavior. And from there onto markets. So it's actors before markets. From markets, we move to market dynamics and how markets work well and when they don't work well. And then based on those actors and the markets, we have the ingredients to develop a model of the aggregate economy for the short and the medium run where we can talk about fiscal policy and monetary policy, unemployment and inflation, but all on the basis of those same set of actors and markets that have been established in the first part of the book. We can extend the model of the aggregate economy to the long run to talk about the future of work, automation and robots. And running right through the text from the beginning are the themes of inequality, globalization, the future of work, innovation, uh, and uh, environmental uh, uh, economics and climate change. And they're brought together in a set of capstone units right at the end of the book where students can really go into depth. And one of those uh, gives a uh, hundred years of economic history and is a really fantastic way for students to bring together all the work that they've done on, uh, on macroeconomics and use the different macroeconomic models from the Great Depression to the global financial crisis. So what we've done is to bring to the front of the book game theory, the rules of the game to, as a way of thinking about institutions, external effects and social preferences. And what now comes later is perfect competition and clearing markets, all of those supply and demand curves. It's 2019 and the students revising for their Economics 101 exam. Their head's full of prices, supply and demand, competition and equilibrium. We then skip across 2020 because the exams were cancelled and go into 2021. And here's a student reading Cause the Economy and her head's full of external effects and social preferences. She's thinking about the economics of the COVID crisis and thinking forward 
to the economics of climate change. So I'd like to invite you to take uh, a look at CORE's economy and think about how you might use it in teaching your introductory course in economics. The economy is available free online as an ebook, and it's not just a flat PDF, it's an interactive ebook. And one of the things that the students really like are the click through model building uh, that they can see how the model's created step by step and run it through as many times as they like until they've really understood it. They also like the, uh, the question and answer format in the ebook. So lots of questions and then immediate feedback whether they've got the answer correct or incorrect. For offline use, there are apps and there's also a low priced uh, paperback available from Oxford University Press. So go and have a look.